name to make half-assed music that hopefully people will check out. So I give them that. But if you think back a couple episodes ago in which Biv and I uh, reviewed uh, Mystic Prophecy's album, which both of us, but Biv especially, really knocked that album down a couple points based on just how bad the lyrics were. And while musically it was tight, vocally it was pretty good, the lyrics were just so bad and cheesy and cliche, it c- Biv couldn't look past it. And I look at that, and then I look at Prayers for the Damned by 6 a.m., and... To me, it's the same category, not musically by any means, but you had mentioned, Biv, how it's more upbeat than it is, but it's so just cheesy, just, I can't, like I said, I can't get past about how just cheesy, cliche, almost awful the lyrical content is. And James Michaels is a mixed bag on vocals to me. At times, I don't like him. Other times, I do. It all depends on the song. But the lyrics are just bad. I can't get past it. And you know, there's 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 good and bad on the album to me. Um, the album, first track, Rise, sounds like a stick song in the beginning. Like, with just this... You know, just this chorus that's just like rise in the beginning of the song. Just it loses me right away. Kind of cheesy. You have some good tracks on the album. Like I, we just played You've Come to the Right Place. I love that song. That's a great track. Catchy as hell. Really, really good. Uh, I'm Sick. Everything Went to Hell. Those are all really, really good songs. But you, 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 you compile uh, the good tracks, which I just named three. Again, Rise to me was was a definite downer. Belly of the Beast, yeah, it's okay. You have a song, Can't Stop, Can't Stop, You Cannot Stop Me. That's the that's the chorus. Come on, hey, you can't stop me. It's just cheesy and bad. So I mean, there's, there's just there's just some songs that to me are definite misses on the album. It's a mixed bag. Six a.m. gets a six from me that's my score wow uh, well first of all i'm gonna start with with rise uh, um if anything comes across sounding like sticks i don't have a problem with that because well, I, I don't either be, but not from 6 a.m i consider sticks to be one of the most legendary sounds of of uh progressive rock that there ever was and so if anybody wants to model a, even a song after sticks i'm fine with it um Secondly, I think it's a great song. I think I think it's very upbeat. It's positive. It's and it's it's a great track to start the CD with. You know, the thing about I, I understand where you're coming from on the cheesy vocals. I really do. Now, you had mentioned when we did Mystic Prophecy how I couldn't get past the, the the lyrics, and you're absolutely correct. But I think that was more of a language barrier. That was more of a, you know, we know limited English, or we know the cliches that we hear in Hollywood and things like that, so we're just going to run with that. With this, this is obviously not a language barrier. To me, this is doing something that, that rock music, and in particular metal, needs more of, and that is positive influences. You know, Nikki Six has been through a lot in his life, has almost died several times. Sure. And, uh, you know, not that listeners know this or much care but i've been through some of that too here in my recent past and i will tell you that this for me was a very uplifting positive look on life if you take the song life is beautiful from the heroin diaries and you build an entire album on that that's what this cd is to me hmm I find all of the songs, but maybe one, and I, I'd have to look to see exactly which one it was, to be worthy songs to be on this. I liked Belly of the Beast. Um, I really thought it was a kind of a catchy song. But to me, this this is something that, that we need more of. You know, we hear all the time about, you know, murders and, and you know, like even bands that I love, like Primal Fear, talk about, you know, fighting and, You know, you're going to get yours, and I'm going to kill you, and this and that. These are positive lyrics, positive influences. And coming from someone like Nikki Six, who comes from a band like Molly Crew, you know, uh, this is refreshing to me. So I gave this an 8.5 out of 10. Hmm. Well, there you go. 
like I said, I don't think it's a bad album, but um, it's it's right in the Hawken category for me. It's got some good stuff. It's got some bad stuff. For me, it's eh, it's okay. Not bad. Fair enough. I you know I think uh, I don't think we were that far apart. I just think that uh, you know the lyrics are what separated us. And, yeah, and uh, I think that's what it is. I probably I mean to your point, I think if the lyrics weren't as at least in my opinion as cheesy as they are. Um, you know, then it may be an eight out of 10 album for me, but I just, I can't look past it. And I understand having positive messages in music is something that, it, you know, we should all want to have and aspire to have, but man, oh man, can't you, can't you make it positive without just being so ridiculously over the top, over the top cheesy? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I like a little Velveeta with my rock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there it is. Prayers for the damn by 6 a.m. That was all I left behind from 11th Hour off of their first album, Memory of a Lifetime Journey, brand new band from Italy. And this is the brainchild of Aldo Torini. But, and it's made up of a lot of people you may have never heard of. In fact, I've never heard of any of the guys, with the exception of Alessandro Del Vecchio, who is involved with Hardline. That's the only reason why I've heard of him. Um, but... Uh, What's interesting about this album, and not only is it something that you'll hear in the mix, but something they actually want to almost promote as a band and, and want it to be known um, of how they feel about the music that they're putting out there. Um, very hem- heavy emphasis on keyboards. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about this before in the past of, you know, some metal bands, especially now mixing albums entirely differently than before. When you think metal albums, you think crunchy guitars right in your face, you know, lightning fast, you know, power metal type sound or progressive metal where you just have, you know, just guitars way up front, a lot of other things in the back. And we heard a Mirath's album, Legacy, where the strings and the, 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 you know, the, uh, the orchestra part of uh, the music was pushed to the front with the guitars kind of in the back a little bit. And this is the same kind of mixing uh, or mastering uh, of the album that uh, 11th Hour was going for as well. But instead of the the strings like in Mirath, they have the the keyboards and the almost uh, uh, symphonic uh, sounds of the album uh, and the forefront and the guitars, drums, and sometimes even vocals more in the back, which is a huge, huge risk when you're talking metal. Does it pan out? Uh, well, I have my thoughts and opinions, but I'm going to turn it over to Biv and have him give us uh, his thoughts and uh, want to hear a little bit more on what he thought of 11th Hour's uh, debut album. What do you think, Biv? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, um, if you're familiar with Italian progressive metal, you may be expecting an over-the-top, Rhapsody-esque type CD, uh, which either you're really into or you're really not. Uh, there's not too many people, I think, that are in the middle on that. So having said that, this is not one that's over-the-top. This is a very listenable, accessible CD, I think, compared to most Italian opera-esque type progressive metal CDs. Having said all of that, there are many tracks on this album that I absolutely love, and you can totally hear the musicianship, the um, the passion that they put into what they're doing. And to your point, Jason, they mixed it incredibly well and differently uh, so that the keyboards were much more to the surface. Uh, I did notice that, and I listened to it both with headphones and uh, without. Now, by the way, you should do that anytime you're listening to a new CD because there are many things that you'll pick up on one that you don't always pick up on the other. It's just a habit that I have. Uh, but I did appreciate that the keyboards were up front, um, and I really enjoyed this CD. 
there's a lot of talent here. Um, a lot of, of room for growth, too. But I'll tell you what, for a first effort, man, 11th hour is on it. Yeah, I thought it was really good. To me, the album is almost split into two halves. The first half is progressive metal, and the second half is more power. Um, and I hear a lot of Symphony X in these guys. And you, you, you like All I Left Behind, Jerusalem, uh, are definite Symphony X-inspired progressive metal, hands down. Um you know, but then you look at songs later on in the album, uh, Requiem from a Prison, which is a very power metal track. Really good, by the way. Um, Island in the Sun, the middle, has a really cool part. Tremendous solo on that song as well. Um, my only knock on the album is there's a lots of slow stuff. Um, you know, your, your headbangers are there. Your fast stuff is there. But there's lots of slow to mid-tempo tracks throughout the album. The only thing that helps, because I'm not a slow ballad esque like you know metal fan, the only thing that helps is Alessandro can sing his ass off, and he's really really good. And on songs where I would be very quick to go boring next and move on, his vocals carry a lot of songs for me. Um, and I'm not trying to compare the two, but um, the first thing that came to my mind when I heard him vocally. Um, and I don't mean style. I mean, as a way to carry a song in which I would normally move on, but vocally it's so well done that I'll stick around, um, is, uh, Tommy Kavarik, um, from seventh wonder Camelot, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not trying to compare the vocal styles cause they're totally different. I'm saying there are songs that Tommy sings in parts of certain seventh wonder songs where, the song so far is not doing much for me, but Tommy is so incredible that I listen just to hear him sing in that alone. And then before you know it, the song kicks ass. And now this has become like one of your favorite songs. That to me is a lot of how a lot of these tracks end up being for 11th hour is Alessandro at parts of a song. I'm going, okay, uh, this isn't that good of a song. And then boom, it's really, really solid. Um, after all we've been missing is a great example of that to me, it's a very, very solid debut album. And, um, I'm really looking forward to what these guys do in the future. And again, I think it's going to be interesting to see because the first album to me is progressive metal. The second is power metal and Biven to your point. It's not a, you know, Italian, uh, power, um, you know, super duper fast, cheesy content and vocals and lyrics type of approach. Um, it's definitely a very balanced, progressive power metal sound. And I'm curious what that translates to next time around. Are they going to be Symphony X or are they going to be Rhapsody of Fire? I don't know. But um, if it's more the Symphony X sound, which is what this album was more so to me, or at least the first half, I think they're going to be a really, really solid band to keep your eye on. Definitely, if you're a if you, if you are a progressive metal fan, a Symphony X fan, especially, check out Eleventh Hour: Memory of a Lifetime Journey. It's a really solid album. Biv, I gave it a seven out of ten. What did you give it? Well, I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. Wow. Um, I I really enjoyed some of the ballads. Um, uh, I, of course, I'm a sucker for ballads. You know that. Mm -hmm. um, I even search out the ballads from My Start which there aren't many. Oh, but, but see, they do they some do. of the best. They do. They Ice do. Earth does some of the best metal ballads of any band I've ever heard. Uh, it, yeah, especially from a power metal band. But, yes. Um, but having said all that, uh, no, this is a solid, solid CD, and if you really want to scope out some new talent, you're not going to go wrong with these guys at all. So 7.5 out of 10. Wow, 7.5 out of 10 from Biv, 7 from me. Check them out, 11th Hour. Great album. Hey, this is Steve Cohn, and you're listening to According to Metal. Turn it up. Biz Best Bands! You've never heard of. You just heard the introduction to Biz Best Bands Triple B, and you're going, wait a minute, Jason, this is like, you're like halfway through the episode. Isn't Triple B at the end of every episode? Well, not anymore. Actually doing some changes to how Triple B is going to be laid out on 
every uh, show that we do here. And this is Biv's brainchild. This is one of the reasons Biv and I wanted to do a podcast was to make sure that you not only heard our thoughts and opinions on metal, and we could talk about those as well, but for you to also hear about bands that need to be heard. 